Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into actually using the program. When PSP Seek is first launched, you'll see a screen with a grid of 64 by 16 rectangles. For those of you used to writing electronic music, you'll probably recognize this as a step sequencer. Here is where you can trigger notes and make some basic changes to the synthesizer parameters. In the PSP Seek documentation, I refer to this as step edit mode. Each row corresponds to a different instrument, each column is a point in time where a sound can be triggered. The blue dot at the top of the screen indicates the current triggered step. When PSP Seek first starts, the blue dot moves across the screen to each step, and then when it gets to the end of the screen, it jumps back to the first column. This mode is known as loop mode, as it plays a single loop indefinitely. The name of the current loop is displayed at the bottom left-hand side of the screen next to LP. When PSP Seek is launched, the name next to LP is 00. The current selected step is the red rectangle. All other rectangles right now are green, and none of them are filled. This means that no notes are triggered and PSP Seek is silent. There are two ways to move the selected step around the screen, the digital pad or the analog pad. The digital pad moves the rectangle one step left to right or one step up or down. See it's moving up or down, left and right. The analog pad is used to move more quickly across the screen. By holding it left to right, you can jump eight steps at a time. Holding it up or down causes the rectangle to move one track up or down. So now you can see I'm moving the analog pad left to right eight steps and down and up one track at a time. On the left-hand side is a list of all instruments loaded into this song. Each track has a single generator, either no effects or a single effect, and then the output is sent to an envelope. When PSV Seek first starts, 13 instruments are loaded. The names of the instruments indicate which generator and effect are used in that particular track. For example, the first track is called BAM Zero. This track uses the BAM generator, and because it is the first track with the BAM without any effects, a zero is added immediately to the end of the name. A BAM generator is PSP Seek's version of a two oscillator virtual analog synthesizer. The second track is also only has a BAM generator, but is called BAM1 because it is a second track with just a BAM generator. Every synthesizer in PSP Seek uh, is given a unique name by adding a number to the end of its name. The fourth track has an N generator and an SVF effect, so it's called NSVF0. N is a simple noise generator, and SVF is PSP Seek's version of a traditional audio filter. There is one other generator and one other effect used in this set of instruments. The BFF, BFF, uh, sorry, not the BFF generator, the BFM generator uh, is a two operator, four oscillator FM generator, and DEC is a decimator plus sample and hold effect. There are a number of other generators and effects available in PSP Seek. However, since we're focusing on how to use a step sequencer, I'm not going to get into any of the details on how these work quite yet. I just wanted to give some basic background as to what the names mean on the left-hand side of the screen. Now that we know how to move around within a loop, let me show you how to trigger and control some aspects of the tracks from the step sequencer. To trigger a note, press X. I'm going to go up to the BAM generator. I'm going to press X. When you do this, you can now hear the note is being triggered. Uh, when you do this, the fill of the step of the selected step changes from black to blue. Blue indicates a note is triggered at this step. When the blue dot at the top of the screen reaches the trigger step, it creates a sound using the generator and effect loaded into this track. So you can see every time that the blue dot reaches the, the blue triggered note at step eight, you can hear a sound. Because the PSP speakers are quite poor, the sound might be hard to hear unless you have headphones on or your PSP is hooked up to external speakers. If you have speakers or headphones attached and you still can't hear anything, try pressing the plus button next to the volume at the bottom of the PSP to increase the output volume of your PSP. The fastest way to stop a step from being triggered is to hold the X button and press the left trigger button. So I'm pressing X and left trigger. The highlighted step goes back from... Uh, from blue to black, uh, I'm going to trigger a step here again so we can see some other things you can do in step edit mode. So press X again, and we now have another triggered step. When you press X, you might have noticed that some of the information uh, was highlighted on the screen. In total, there are six names and numbers in the upper right-hand side of the screen. The four names in the far upper right are the same for every track, while the two names in the middle change based on the generator effect used in the selected track. Also, if you hold the X button, 
you can see that the color of trigon ball along with the numbers next to them change from gray to white. So you can see on the right hand side trigon ball are now white. Let's start with these trigon ball parameters. Ball is simply the volume for the triggered note at that particular step. The first time a note is triggered in a loop, volume is set to 50. The maximum value is 100 and the minimum value is 0. To change the volume, hold the X button and press either the analog or digital pad left or right. So I'm moving it to the left to lower the volume. And move it to the right to increase the volume. You might be wondering why you'd want to set the volume to zero, which I have set it to right now. Uh, this is useful if you want to force a previously triggered sound to turn off immediately. When the sequencer hits the note with volume zero, it re-triggers a sound, but because the volume is zero, uh, nothing is played back at all. The trig parameter is a unique feature in PSP-Seq. The number next to trig controls the trigger probability. In most steps, the sequencer in most step sequencers, the decision to trigger a note is purely a yes or no operation. If it is triggered, it plays, and if it is not triggered, it is not played. However, in PSP Seq, the choice to play a note is set via a probability. If trig is set to 100, then the triggered note always plays, and if it's set to 0, then it never plays. If trig is set to 75, there's a 75% chance it will play, and 25% chan 25 chance it will not play. To set the trig value, hold the X button and press the analog pad up or down. So I'm going to hold the X button and I'm going to move the analog pad down, and you can see the trigger, trigger value goes down. If you set trigger all the way down to zero, uh, the fill color changes back from blue to black. So I'm going to move it all the way to zero, and you can see that at step 24, the note is not triggered anymore. And this effectively deletes the trigger. Trigger probabilities are useful for making loops sound different every time they're played back, and is especially useful if you're making drum and bass loops with the WAV file player. There's already a tutorial on YouTube which goes over how to trigger probabilities in making drum and bass. If you search for PSP Seek drum and bass, you'll find it.